In this video, I'm going to give you a logical way to set up the custom functions on your camera. It doesn't matter now if you have a Nikon, a Canon, a Sony or a Fuji. All cameras have more or less the same capabilities in this area. And the thing they all have in common is that there is now a huge number of settings and customizations that you can make use of. I'll be demonstrating the concepts on my Sony A1, but the approach can equally be applied to other brands and cameras. Opening the menu on the camera, you can see, in this case, there are eight sections to the menu. And within each section, there can be up to 12 pages of settings. Some of these pages can have multiple settings between around three and up to 10. So there are 56 pages with an average of five settings per page. And this means there are possibly around about 250 settings, some of which may even have multiple options. Anyway, the point is there are a lot of settings to manage. You don't want to be hunting around this menu when you're actually on a shoot and the pressure is on for you to deliver a good result. So my suggestion is that you make yourself a table or grid and I'm going to show you mine at the end of this little section of how I did it. And you categorize all these options into three or four different categories. First of all, there are the settings that you set up once and for all with your camera. You probably do this when you get a new camera. You go through every option and set it to your environment and your type of shooting. This would be things like naming, networking options. It would be good to document anything that you change from the standard here in your table. It could be useful if you have more than one camera body or for when you get a new camera or even if there's a firmware upgrade that resets everything to standard, such as has happened recently on the Sony A1 and the Sony A7S III. This is an important process also for learning the full capability of your camera. The objective being that you can use it to its full potential as the essential tool of your trade. Having done that and set everything correct, you should consider the most common types of shoot that you do. These can be set up and programmed into the memory recall options. On my camera, I've got three of these. I mainly shoot video, so I have them set up for three quality settings of capture that I need. In my case, these are the lowest bit rate of 45 megabits per second for longer video, 10 bit 422 for higher quality, shorter clips, and 100p to get the highest quality for key B-roll where I may need to apply some slow motion effects. I have these setups for the three scenarios programmed into the memory recall functions one, two, and three. But just to show you, for example, at the moment I'm on 4K 50p, and so I have set my shutter speed to 100th of a second. This is what I use for shooting interviews and longer form videos. But if I wanted to shoot something higher quality, I can move on to register number three here. And you can see immediately that we've moved up to 100p and correspondingly the shutter speed is set to a 200th of a second to maintain the right ratio between shutter speed and frame rate. I know that by just simply selecting the relevant memory recall, most of the settings that are important to that particular shoot will be set up. I say most of the settings will be set up. There will always be individual circumstances for any particular shoot, even if it falls into one of your defined scenarios. And this is where the custom function menu comes in handy. I set this up as if it were a checklist and includes settings I may need to review before the shoot begins. These could be things like anti-flicker, if, for example, you find yourself in a location where there are LED lights that are causing some flicker on the screen, you could very quickly go into the function menu and switch on the anti-flicker. My function menu is only an example. You need to think through how you use your camera and evaluate each setting option and decide if you want to change it. Program it to one of your recall scenarios or add it to a function menu. Some YouTubers offer pre-built settings that you can copy and load to your camera. I'm not in favor of that. You need to know what each setting is on your camera. If you don't know what it is, then you should look it up. 
No two shooters are the same or do the same work. So you need to make your own system. Use it in practice and improve it based on your experience. So far we've talked about settings that are permanent, settings for a shooting scenario and settings to review at the start of the shoot. Finally, there are the custom buttons that you can see on the camera here. I've got custom buttons here, C1, C2, C3 and on the back C4. And in addition to that, I have a scroll wheel that's here. In the middle of it, there is a button and I can also make use of the scroll wheel buttons left, right, up and down. These are four vital settings that you may need to change on the fly while you're shooting. You don't want to be working through the menus while you're trying to concentrate on framing your subject and, and getting your video. You don't want to be accessing the function menu even. You may want to change metering mode for a change in the scene or you may want to switch on or off the face eye priority. If I press C1, that switches on or off face stroke eye priority in autofocus. I may or may not want to prioritize faces and so I can flick it on or off by just pressing C1. I can press C2 very quickly to get into the metering mode. In case, for example, there are lights that I don't want to blow out, I could quickly change to highlight priority. And C3 allows me to change the autofocus transition speed so that I can do an easy pull focus, for example, from foreground back to the subject. Two other buttons that are great for me are the ability to switch into crop mode. This gives me a crop factor of 1.5, changing, for example, a 50mm lens into a 75 and giving me a little bit more reach. So let's have a look at the kind of table that I've produced for this. I actually have two cameras. I have a Sony A1 and a Sony A7S III, and they pretty much have a compatible set of features and custom buttons. So by having that table worked out, then I can use it to have the settings being completely compatible between the two different cameras. I hope you find this approach useful um, to deciding where and when you should use your function menus, your quick settings and your custom buttons. And if you find that useful, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the Video Darkroom.